Papa John Phillips, more so than probably any other illustrious residents of Laurel Canyon, will play a major role in spreading the emerging youth counterculture across America. His contribution will be twofold. First, he will co-organize the famed Monterey Pop Festival, which, through unprecedented media exposure, will give mainstream America its first real look at the music and fashions of the nation hippie movement. Second, Phillips will pen an insipid song known as San Francisco, Be Sure to Wear Flowers in Your Hair, which will quickly rise to the top of the charts. Along with the Monterey Pop Festival, the song will be instrumental in luring the disenfranchised, a preponderance of whom will be underage runaways, to San Francisco to create the Haight-Ashbury phenomenon and the famed 1967 Summer of Love. Before arriving in Laurel Canyon and opening the doors of his home to the soon-to-be-famous, the already-famous, and the infamous, such as Charlie Manson, whose family also spent time at the log cabin at the Laurel Canyon home of Mama Cass Elliot, which, in case you didn't know, sat right across the road from the Laurel Canyon home of Abigail Folger and Wojtek Frakowski. But let's not get ahead of ourselves here. John Edmund Andrew Phillips was, shockingly enough, yet another child of the military intelligence complex. The son of a U.S. Marine Corps Captain Claude Andrew Phillips and the mother who claimed to have psychic and telekinetic powers, John attended a series of elite military prep schools in the Washington, D.C. area, culminating in an appointment to the prestigious U.S. Naval Academy at Annapolis. After leaving Annapolis, John married Susie Adams, a direct descendant of founding father John Adams. Susie's father, James Adams Jr., had been involved in what Susie described as cloak and dagger stuff with the Air Force in Vienna, or what others like to call covert intelligent operations. Susie herself would later find employment at the Pentagon alongside John Phillips' older sister, Rosie, who dutifully reported to work at the complex for nearly 30 years. John's mother, Deanie Phillips, also worked for most of her life for the federal government in some unspecified capacity. And John's older brother, Tommy, was a battle-scarred former U.S. Marine who found work on the Alexandria Police Force as a cop, albeit one with a disciplinary record for exhibiting extreme violence. John Phillips himself, of course, though surrounded throughout his life by military intelligence personnel, did not involve himself in such matters, or so we are led to believe. Before succeeding in his musical career, however, John did seem to find himself, quite innocently of course, in some rather unusual places. One such place was Havana, Cuba, where Phillips arrived at the very height of the Cuban Revolution. For the record, Phillips has claimed that he went to Havana as nothing more than a concerned private citizen, with the intention of, you're going to love this one, fighting for Castro. Because, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of folks in those days traveled abroad to thwart CIA operations before taking up residence in Laurel Canyon and joining the hippie generation. During the two weeks or so that the Cuban Missile Crisis played out, a few years after Castro took power, Phillips found himself cooling his heels in Jacksonville, Florida, alongside the Mayport Naval Station. Anyway, let's move on to yet another of Laurel Canyon's earliest and brightest stars, Mr. Stephen Stills. 